We welcome you today to the Metropolitan Community Church Spiritual Engagement Hour. This is a time for us to have dialogue with each other, with community, and with the presence of the Holy One. We're so grateful. If it's your first time to attend an event at the Metropolitan Community Church of Washington, D.C., either on site, online, or on demand, my name's Dwayne Johnson. I'm the senior pastor, and I do welcome you. And my email is revdwayne at mccdc.com. And we'd always love to hear from you. I bring you greetings today from our associate pastor, Reverend Kathy Alexander, who is at the People of African Descent Conference being held in Detroit today. We have a number of folks from MCCDC who are in Detroit including some of our membership, which we have online membership that lives in the Detroit area. And we are so grateful for that. A few things about OCCDC. First of all, we do believe in the power of God. And today we're going to be talking about the power of God inside of us and the God who seeks to be in personal relationship with us. We also believe very much in what it means to grow as a community and to grow together and to support each other and to welcome each other. We certainly offer prayers and support. We also are a community that advocates and is engaged in the community. And then we're also about participation. And that's why we use the word engagement for this time. Many churches, it's much more of a pronouncement that happens. Here we seek to turn pronouncements into engagements and into dialogue. And so we're thankful for that. Today, our topic is spiritual strength from the 2024 presidential and national election. We want to talk about real things. And so that's something that's very real on our hearts. And from time to time, we'll return to this topic of what we're feeling and how we approach the, elect the U.S. elections that are coming up. For those of you who are international, perhaps the principles we talk about will be helpful to you in your context. That is certainly our hope. Let us begin by becoming present in body, mind, and in spirit. We light a candle today to evoke and draw on the Holy Spirit in that guidance. We invite you now to take a moment to just be present when you're going to be done. Take a moment to just notice what's happening in your body, any places of tension, see if you can release those. Your mind, if your mind is all over the place, invite it to a center in place. In spirit, the energy of divine grace in the mind. I'd like to begin with a prayer by Nan Merrill, which speaks of this inner power that we'll be talking about today. This is based on Psalm 14. The hearts of the arrogant say there is no power in love. They live in illusion. They torture themselves and others. They walk alone in utter fog, calling it light. Love looks into the heart of every person to see if any act with wisdom, if any seek to move with love. Many there are who have gone astray, who are ruled by greed and power. Is there one who is wise and kind? Have they no knowledge all the arrogant, who devour people and nations as if they were bred and never call upon love? One day terror will reign in their hearts, for love's friend is true. And in truth will those who seek love's way be set free. Oh, that the hearts of all those children might call upon their angels. Oh, that all people, all nations might know that harmony and beauty reside in diversity, that we are all one in God's love. Oh, that we may rejoice in life in the abundance of love's gift, created and given to all. In the prayer from Psalm 14.
The prayer that we just offered from Nan Merrill Psalms for Praying was written many years ago, and yet it seems like it is a prayer that speaks to our current context. There's a few lines that to me resonate with what's going on right now. Um, one line is there is no power in love, or there is, uh, oh, the arrogant say there is no power in love. And uh, I've noticed that some of the candidates who have spoken about love, Cord, Senator Cord Booker, for example, have been labeled as weird or quacks when they put so much focus on, on bringing us together in love. There seems to be a mentality that power is about power over. There's this line here that says, many there are who have gone astray who are ruled by greed and power. And one thing that I've observed is that there is a lot of talk of power and that so many motives are driven by greed. The invitation of the psalmist is to look for those who are wise and kind. The invitation is to see kindness and love as an incredible value when it comes to our colonies. There's another line that says, those who devour people and nations as if they were bread. And we certainly see that not only in our own political climate, but also around the world. Oh, that the hearts of all loved children might call upon their angels, which reminds me of Abraham Lincoln. We talked about the better angels, the higher angels, the call for us to be a part of God's love and God's work in this world, however you might define God, the God of your understanding, as we often say here. So with that as part of our context today, as we begin to process our feelings and our thoughts, we certainly invite your thoughts on the scripture, prayer that was read, or just how you're doing and how you're feeling as we enter in to a time that's very real that we will talk about. We're not going to ignore the context. Context for the moments. Nice. Yeah, sometimes the sometimes the sound is different. Any thoughts today on your heart? How are you feeling? Well, I guess it's this thing called love. Um. People talk about love and unconditional love and different types of love. And it being a feeling and you can't see it or you can't be it or I'm really confused about mm -hmm. what love is. Okay, excellent. Um, yeah. I guess the closest thing that I can think about as far as love is concerned is being kind being aware of the need of my environment and being open to caring for for others um, others meaning every living creature on planet earth yes so I guess that's the closest I could come to love okay yeah well, thank you for uh, for mentioning that because I'll just share from what I've learned through the years and my personal perspective is that uh, love is not a feeling. Love is an action. And I find good news in that because we don't always feel loving and yet we can choose our actions. Now, feelings at times come as an offshoot of love there are warm feelings, there are feelings of affection, and those are part of love. But in my view, love at its core is an action, an action for the good of others, the good of the community, the good of ourselves. So no matter what we're feeling, we can choose actions of love. We can be aware of our thoughts, but sometimes it's very difficult to control our thoughts. Sometimes our thoughts have a mind of their own. 
And they may or may not be loving thoughts. A lot of times, for me at least, they're not. The thoughts are going to come. I get to choose whether to entertain those thoughts or not. I can choose to notice the thoughts, and I can choose to release them. And when they come back, I can say, you're not welcome here. You keep coming back, but I'm not going to entertain you. I'm not inviting you to dinner. I'm aware of you, and I release you. And so that's, to me, is whatever the thoughts are doing, we can choose our actions. And, and then kind of like in the same vein, when I do the action, mm -hmm. actions are misinterpreted okay. because I like to care about things and people. Yeah. And if I'm caring for or showing some sort of affection for mm -hmm. another individual, it may be misinterpreted as hitting on. Okay. And that then makes me draw back of the thing that's in my heart that I see that this person may need or want or, mm -hmm. you know, giving them and then it just gets all, sure. you know, misinterpreted. Is that misinterpretation because they don't know what love is? Or question? <laughs> yeah, well, perfect love casts out fear. And I think when we act and with our best intention and pause to be guided by the Spirit, we're planting seeds of love, we're doing actions of love, and however that's interpreted, the action still stands on its own. You can only know your own heart, and others can only know their own hearts. Now, it may be that if that does come up and it is misinterpreted, that opens itself to a clarifying conversation, and clarification is also an action. So it still comes back to the action of love. So what we're called to do is to continue to work on our own motives, our heart, to ask ourselves the right questions, and then from those loving questions to ourselves, to then extend those to our actions with others. But absolutely, things can be misinterpreted. Um, the best intentions can be misinterpreted. And then we just keep, we just, if that happens, we ask ourselves, did I do that with a, with a clear heart? And did I do that from a place of love? And if we did, then we've done our best in the name of love. You were asking how we're feeling right now. And yeah. you now, so I had kind of mixed feelings. Um, apart from a you know emotional roller coaster following whatever news mm -hmm. there are right now with regards to November. Um, I also have mixed feelings because I'm in the process of becoming a US citizen, mm -hmm. which I have thought about for a while and I have not taken the step. Um, I don't even know why I, I've been eligible to become a citizen for a number of years now already, but I have not done that partially because of my German citizenship and not wanting to lose my citizenship of birth. Um, and so now that I can actually keep that, the uh, German immigration law will change in the summer. Um, I decided to take this step. Um, and. I might become a citizen before this November's election and be able to vote for the first time. I might not. So then I'll vote in the next you know, yeah. upcoming. But it, so there's a personal element to that that uh, I follow the news because I, I do that. You know, I work in a political environment, so I'm interested and I also have to know what's going on. Yeah. But I'm also personally affected, of course. And so those are the kind of big mixed things that are going on right now in my life. And I, you know, I'm kind of excited, I'm a little weary, I'm a little exhausted, I'm a little 
all over the place. So it's for me always a good moment to pause, reflect, let the news be what they are without getting upset about every little latest twist and turn and kind of try to look in the longer horizon, right? What does it mean for me and for the people around me in my community? So yeah, that's where I am right now. Yeah. That's that's interesting. Um, there is a lot of news. There is a lot going on. And I made a decision recently to get involved in Kamala's um, campaign. I don't want to sit this one out. And I think that comes from the love of people um, to not let discord be the overarching feeling in this democracy. Mm -hmm. and to maintain the democracy and not go back to the dark ages. Mm -hmm. But just become involved to do, to do the action, to do the action of love for mm -hmm. the people. Um, I don't recognize the 4th of July as my independence it's more like Jim Tate mm -hmm. for me. Yeah. And still I realize that there is um so much work yet in 2024. So much work to do to right all the wrongs of the past. I mean, we're making strides, but in 2024, we still have the same issues about voting, the same issues about inclusion. It's like it, it baffles me. But then I look at myself and I say, well, what are you doing about it? Mm -hmm. So I've, uh, I've got dual citizenship. I have um, Nigerian citizenship and um, U.S. citizenship. Mm -hmm. wow. Um, and I had a family that four people that I brought over from Nigeria that now have their citizenship. Um, so it, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> yes. it, it's a whole lot. Yeah. You've both spoken about citizenship. Which raises the question of um, what is our deepest and truest citizenship? Scripture speaks about uh, the beloved community of God. Jesus talks a lot about the realms of, uh, of this world and the realms of God's world. And uh, what are your thoughts when we talk about citizenship in a spiritual context while also acknowledging our current national and international realities and the implications for citizenship? First thing that came to mind when you said that was the citizenship of blood. Mm -hmm. that, that was the first thing that hit my mind. We all got the same blood. Mm -hmm. Maybe be, okay. I mean, be positive, some are old positive, old negative, the universal one, but we all got blood. And I'm of the citizenship of blood because if you just look at people according to blood, everybody's the same. It's interesting that you use that as because I often feel people who refer to that kind of citizenship have a, a very narrow nationalist kind of heritage. And it might be my German baggage that I'm coming with, right? That's been used to exclude mm -hmm. others, basically, if we don't have a white blood, so to speak. So, you know, all you see 
us as human universal in the sense we all have blood. I feel that concept in my mind is tainted because it's been mm -hmm. used to exclude others actually on the universal concept, so to speak, but to say there's the right blood and wrong blood, so to speak. Yes. Um, when you said citizenship, actually the first thing that came to mind is scripture, and I don't know where it is, but the, I think it's Paul who says we are ambassadors of Christ. And so and that's it. the word ambassador obviously means you are from somewhere and you advocate on behalf of who you represent. And so in that sense, if we represent the community of believers, then there is a, a different kind of citizenship that does not exclude, but rather include and it also doesn't limit the rights you have or you don't have based on your citizenship rights the the redeeming love of Christ is available to everyone it's not a concept that is exclusive um and yes you can interpret it that way but I would also say that's not my interpretation it's not my understanding um to use that as a as a way to exclude others who are non-Christian or non-believers. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's that's a, an interesting concept. Um, also, to become a citizen, you have to do a citizen civics test. You have to answer questions. Um, and some of them are more obvious than others, um, but I also found it interesting it, even the citizenship questions distinguish between rights that every citizen of this country have or duties and rights that everyone has. And also, the, the freedom of speech is not limited to those who are legal citizens of this country. This is a protection that is true for everyone who is in this country. Uh, whereas the right to vote is limited to those who are legal citizens of this country. So, you know, um, I find it interesting that even on a on this kind of test you have to pass, you know, it, it prompts you to reflect on what, what's actually the legal requirement and what is the promise that the idea of America offers to people. And so it's uh, it's interesting because it, it made me pause and reflect, yes, there is a difference, but it's also interesting that certain rights are exclusive for certain groups of people and others are rights that are universal, even in the U.S. understanding. So I, that's those are things that came up for me mm -hmm. yeah. uh, on the citizenship piece. Yeah. It's funny with the citizenship piece, as I was helping my son study for the step, I didn't know the answers. I was clueless. Mm -hmm. Who's the who's the speaker of the house, who's the, I don't know. I wasn't paying attention to politics. I'm just riding the road. I was born here, I'm a citizen. Okay, all is well, but other people have to slave over the history portion of it that most people in the United States don't even know. And I found that very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the interesting piece is also, so there's, you know, certain tensions obviously there, right? So legally, I have to absolve allegiance to any other nation when I become a U.S. citizen, but the U.S. does not make me give up my German citizenship. It's not that I have to lose that or give that up when I become a U.S. citizen, but, I, you know, in that test, you have to ask that question in a certain way. <laughs> and so I also find those gray areas interesting where well, the questionnaire makes you answer is not necessarily the lived reality uh, in the law, which I also found interesting. So there's there are all kinds of interesting pieces in that where that yeah. make me pause for a moment, question. Um, yeah, it's it's definitely an enlightening process in in many ways, and I um, I understand why. Aspiring U.S. citizens have to go through that process. I understand that the country wants to make sure if you become an American, you understand what your obligations are. You follow the laws. You understand, you know, your place in history, uh, why this country was founded, etc. And um, some geography, some other pieces. But um, I also think it might be a good reminder for American naturally born citizens to look at 
what those questions are and see like, oh yeah, this is actually, this is what we believe, this is who we are. Um, same for me in German, right? I don't know if I would pass the German citizenship test. I haven't even looked at the questions that foreigners have to, you know, answer. Um, but that's the kind of interesting piece yeah, that comes with your question of what does it mean to be a citizen? Yes. Or also to be a citizen as a faith community. Um, citizen of Christ, we speak. So I could say I'm a citizen of God. Mm -hmm. um, I don't believe that the story of the Bible was the only place that that story took place. Because after studying Native American um, religions and different religions around the world, I find similar stories. Um, I used to practice Buddhism in Dmitri Shochu, and they're reciting this, um, they, they are part of the sutra. Um, and I asked, I said, well, what is the story? I don't understand it. You know, it's not, what is that saying? And it was a story of these kids that needed medicine and they were depending on their father for the medicine. But the father said, I'm going to go for a while to take the medicine. So it was real similar to Christ is going to go, but I'm going to leave you with the medicine, which is the Holy Spirit. Um, so I believe that if I believe that God is universal, God wasn't just in Jerusalem wasn't just in um, Mesopotamia. It was all over the world. The Bible doesn't speak of other countries like um, North America or South America, only in this Asia minor, I guess. Um, so I believe that God was all over the place. That's why it's a lot of the stories are similar to the stories that I find in the Bible. If it's a universal God, then I'm a citizen of God. Mm -hmm. And I like what Reverend Kathy, what she says, the God of your understanding. The God of your understanding doesn't have to be the, at odds with the God of my understanding. Mm -hmm. But people who spew hatred because of your um, sexual identity because of the color of your skin, because of the way that you speak, because of the way that you dress, because of your economic status. I do not believe that they're following a God of love, but that's the God of their understanding <laughs> that I choose not to participate with. <laughs> so... So one could say we are, listening to both of you, one could say that we are part, we are citizens of the universal community of love. And it's described in so many different ways. There's certainly the descriptions that we see in the Judeo-Christian scriptures and texts. And we also see, as you said, Kathy, love coming through in other stories and traditions and texts as well. Oftentimes, in fact, some of the other traditions have more of a sense of the creator as uh, creating a world that, that where we see all of our siblings. Now, I think, actually, I do think that the Judeo-Christian texts have a lot to say about creation that gets overlooked because it's been usurped by some of the power and dominance um, of some of the, the Western traditions that have co-opted some of the descriptions in Scripture, which we'll talk about a lot when we go back to the Bible in 90 days. Um, and yet there are some uh, traditions that offer descriptions that are much more creation-creator-oriented 
than the Judeo-Christian tradition has often been, uh, been described. So we have this higher, or, oh, higher is the right word because that kind of creates this kind of deal. We, we, we have this centering citizenship. It is the citizenship of, of love, which connects all people, all nations, all creation. And some would probably say all universes in this uh, center and in this thread of love. I think if, if um, Professor Dr. Rollin would be here, he would totally also make a point that yeah. every thing created is part of that citizenship, right? Mm -hmm. every, Absolutely. Every stone, every tree, every yeah. animal, um, every being. Um, so in, it's also a good reminder mm -hmm. to take that citizenship of love is definitely a broader concept, but also a probably more adequate concept to mm -hmm. describe the connectedness and reality of all of us being in this physical place together or the mm -hmm. spiritual place together. So yeah. I, um, I like also your comment about the Native American traditions because obviously that is something that doesn't come naturally to me in a way to see this is how we see the world. So it's, it's a good reminder to look for other wisdom and, and traditions to kind of just make you aware of what you're missing or what, you know, how limited you are sometimes in your in your own understanding of views um, based on your own upbringing and, and tradition. So I I appreciate that perspective. Yes. Yeah. I have a um, spider plant. The spider plants are like little palm leaves, but they generate little spider looking other leaves that look like them, but they're just small. And I had a whole bunches of these spider plants. So I took the babies off and I planted them in their own pot. And I started when I closed my living room curtain down, it was hitting the adult spider plant. So I started putting my hand under the leaves and bringing them forward. Wow. And putting the curtain up and down. Mm -hmm. Since I started doing that, that thing has just it's like I feel like I'm hugging the wow. plant, and the plant has just gotten stronger and more mm. vibrant than it was before. And it's just that in the evening and in the morning, I'm hugging the plant mm. over the curtain. Yeah. Mm. I'm true hugging. Well, I love that when it does connect. And, and, and when we're talking about sharing spiritual resources, preparation for November 5th. That image you described is, is a metaphor of that of that abiding, that, that abiding protection, nourishment, hugging is a word you use, and that strength. And so that's a good, beautiful image. I think it speaks to the heart of the creator's intent, which is for each of us to flourish. The intention of God is for all of God's people, all of God's nation, all of God's creation to flourish. I do believe that's the intent of God because that's the intent of love. And so looking at when we decide on how we're going to, to me, voting is an act of love. It's who is bringing that sense of intention to, to, to what they're bringing. Is it, is it bringing the intention for all nations and peoples to flourish? Or is it about protecting one's own stuff? Because love is ultimately not so much about stuff. It's about the relationships that we have. And oftentimes, much of what I hear when I listen to the, the speeches is not about everybody flourishing. It's about certain people flourishing at the expense of others. And it's about protecting uh, one's own position, one's own power. 
Yeah, so this conversation today, as one of many conversations on this topic as we get close to November 5th, we'll revisit it, um, is uh, knowing where our citizenship is and the citizenship of love is, is, one, is one resource to keep us off the roller coaster, which was a term that came up today, to stabilize our feelings. And then that image of, um, of, of nourishing in that image of helping your spider plant to grow. With that at the heart of what God seeks for us. And, and keeping that in mind um, as we acknowledge our, our feelings and anger and all that kind of stuff that, that oftentimes comes up as we, as we move forward. Yeah, um, a friend of mine was looking at um, one of the television shows that you do inventions mm -hmm. and uh, the show they have inventions and think tank or something like that but um they invented this thing called couple of and i saw it my cousin had one i said i have to get it so i have been Inventing bugs from my home <laughs> rather than killing bugs. Yeah. And before I would take a container and put it over it, then slide a card under it, yeah. and then move it. But this thing is clear, so the bug doesn't know kind of like it's coming. And you get yeah. it. And then there's this thing when you slide and you mm -hmm. capture the bug and you don't hurt it and you let it out, go outside. And I find I have so much joy. And evicting bugs from my home so that they're not killed. Yeah, yeah. Except for fruit flies and mosquitoes. Mm -hmm. They have no mercy. <laughs> Other than that, yeah, we're always growing and learning. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Yeah. Any, any uh, closing thoughts today? Uh, again, we uh, welcome those of you who are with us on demand. You may have some questions. Again, my email is bradwayne, that's D-W-A-Y-N-E, at mccdc.com. You can also go to our website, and, and you'll find emails along with myself, but the Reverend Kathy and others, and that's mccdc.com, mccdc.com. We do believe in engaging with the world in which we live. And so we will continue to have these uh, conversations from a nonpartisan uh, perspective, from the perspective of that higher, longer view, learning and growing through each other and with each other. And then in October, we'll be moving into a special series at our 1030 service around courageous faith. We begin that series in the spring, and we'll pick it up again as we get close to the election. We are grateful that we do have a citizenship, a citizenship of love and grace. Closing thoughts, takeaways, what you keep thinking about, it, what you might do. I guess. My closing thought would be to have a plan of love. I listen to rhetoric spewed with hatred that has no plan. And then I listen to the other side that has a plan to help people, to give love, to make people's lives better. So I choose to plan for love. I choose to plan for love. Yeah. Thank you. Choose to plan to love. Do you have a closing yeah. thought for us today? I, I think it's a good it's a good plan to also level that roller coaster that I mentioned earlier and you know to kind of center. Um, and then the other thing is, you know, and I Becoming a citizen, obviously, I will have the obligation, but also the privilege to vote in whatever election mm -hmm. will come yeah. up. And I would also say that voting itself can 
not just be a civic act, it can be an act of justice, it can be an act of love, it can be an act of um, inclusion, not exclusion. And so I think that piece um, might get overlooked by some, and I think it's a good reminder that there are different ways to participate in community and democracy, and this is one way to do it. And I encourage people to participate in every way, peaceful way they yes. and inclusive way they can. So I um, that's one way to do it. It's not the only way, obviously, and, but it's one way. Yes. Thank you. So let's just receive a breath now. Again, we thank you. Um, you for your presence on site. It's good to hear the sounds in preparation for our 1030 worship service today, Eastern time. And for those of you on demand, we hope that you found some resources today and some thoughts to help you live in the fullness of love. Know today that God loves you. We love you. You have a church that supports you and cares for you in the community that supports you and cares for you wherever you might be in the world. God, we thank you so much. Holy Creator, God of our understandings, you are so good. Help us to stay off that roller coaster and to stay centered and grounded in grace, in love, in spirit, and in hope. And help us to explore the riches and the depths of what it means to be citizens of the communities of universal love. We praise you and we thank you in your many names. Amen.